Welcome to Sacred Sessions, light-filled, uplifting and informative conversations for people on their spiritual path. Join me, Melissa Matthews. And me, Alison Filler here, each week as we openly share our personal experiences and wisdom on life, love and spirituality in the modern world. Welcome to Sacred Sessions for another episode and today we're talking about crystals. It's one of the things that I really love and a lot of people have wondered, you know, how I would use them and uh, my guides have asked me to particularly speak about them. So we wish you welcome and Alison, say hello to everybody. I say hello Hi to everyone. Already. Hi Mel. Lovely to be here again. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just been talking about crystals, you know, before we started and um you know what, how, for, for me, like they're so important, but I never uh, put much into them before I started working with them. And it was just a chance encounter. I went to a crystal shop with my mother, like just thinking, I'll go and find out what this is all about. And I picked up a crystal and I felt sick, so sick. So that was like, I put it down because I thought, oh, did I eat something? And then I thought, oh, no, and I picked it back up again. And it was a piece of black kyanite. In fact, it was this one. And I put it back down again. And the lady in the crystal shop, she came over and I just said, I've had such a reaction to that. Is that normal? And she said, yes, it is. And she told me about kyanite. And she said, and all the chakric system, you know, is obviously out. This is how it would make you feel. But she said, here, start with a blue kyanite. And so I, that was the very, very first start of working energetically and understanding the power of crystals. So, but you had something kind of similar, I think, Alison. Yeah, it's interesting that you said that you felt sick when you first oh, picked up your horrible. first crystal. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I had a really similar experience. I was in a, um, you know, a group, um, a, a spiritual awareness class, like a, a meditation class thing I went to. And that particular week we were going to learn about crystals. And as soon as I picked this crystal up to um, do the meditation or to tune into it, I just felt like nauseous. I felt really fearful and sick, like, Something inside me was just like, just felt really sick, but I also felt like really anxious and fearful. And yeah. so what you talked about as well is really true and how crystals can, you know, make us feel and how they're there to help us heal or pull yeah. into balance our chakra system, our energy yeah. system. But um, I also, we also talked about that night, um, Atlantis, the yes. age of Atlantis, and how many of us had past lives potentially or possibly in Atlantis where we used to use crystals regularly for healing and how that all exploded <laughs> so and how there was, you know, for me there was some fear around picking up a crystal before and I, you know, I never would have realised that but that was really interesting to be able to, you know, feel that and, ex and experience that, this kind of fear picking up a crystal again yeah. or working with a crystal because of potentially what had happened or what I'd experienced in a past life. Yeah. Well, they, they are, they are, crystals are an energy, like everything. They're an energy and a frequency. So they can be holding a frequency. They can be generating a frequency. You know, they can, um, you know, and, and so if, if we can think of it in that way, that, um, they have power. They're used in a lot of scientific, in the scientific arena here on earth. They're used in a lot of different ways, you know, and they're valued and they, so, if you think about it from that point of view that you would be obviously quite concerned about picking it up because of what can be done with a crystal. So, cause you know, we're talking about like past lives here and other lives and parallel lives here. Um, so if you think about that, the aversion to actually picking it up or feeling unwell, it may, it may not be the actual crystal that you're picking up, but it's actually, you know, your association with it from that past life. 
Um, and even now, you know, we can also pick up crystals that have been perhaps traumatized during the mining process as well, or, you know, they're suddenly taken and, you know, so, you know, getting to know it and talking with the crystal, but certainly exploring it and seeing, you know, what comes up, you know, what, why, why am I having this aversion? Is it me that the crystal, has the crystal got something to say? Is there something that I need to work on or do I need to help this crystal in some way? It's, you know, and these are fabulous points because you know my guides woke me up last night I was just telling Alison woke me up last night and said well you're going to be talking about this and then you're going to do a meditation also so that people can connect in with their crystal and talk to them because we feel that the crystals of the world need some assistance they're there they have an energy that they can bring to everybody in any situation and a lot of crystals are just being left on shelves and not really paid that much attention to and they are beings so they really felt quite strongly that this was you know a topic that they wanted to bring forward and um and there you are you've also brought up you know atlantis and they brought up um lemuria but they said not to they said for me not to worry about talking about that so there you go you've already brought up atlantis so because <laughs> <laughs> you know like i'm thinking do i have to do research here or what it's like <laughs> Yeah, no, we won't go into a lot. I just, I just thought I'd like because it was like my first experience, and um, we, you know, I know because you always bring up. forth a lot of information, and I'm like, and I always sort of think to myself, oh, Alison just brings forth a lot of information. Like in the last episode, you're talking about my calendars, and you know, and the change of things, and I'm thinking, okay, she's really smart. It's like, it's like. <laughs> well you know so um, there you go so yeah so there's a a lot of reasons for them wanting to bring it through but you know i i thought it was pretty valuable because i do and i've gone on to develop a really good relationship with the crystals that i work with in my practice and in my personal work as well and even for around the home and a lot of crystals are given to me and gifted to me and you know that's a that's a pure joy and i also gift a lot of crystals onwards as well. So sometimes I'm going to do actually buy crystals, never know why, even other things, and then suddenly they're going on to somebody and they make themselves known, um, you know, the crystals or the energy within the crystals because like any other energy, I, ca- um, I can hear them as well. So it's quite, um, <laughs> that's a, maybe a little bit too far for some people, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I do hear them. I got in trouble from one because it went through, the um the washing machine <laughs> it's like I called to you you heard me and it went through the washing machine and when it came out I said oh sorry it was like I told you it's like <laughs> so it's a beautiful piece of um uh green fluorite and so you know because I have them in my pockets and in pillow slips and things Alison so I do use them quite widely and I work with the crystals and and I think that that's what um the guides, um, you know, they really want people to understand how to use them and how to um, acknowledge them and, and understand, like they're, they're there to help you, you know. So so there you go. So is there anything you want to add before I, you know, start? <laughs> no, I just, I, I, I totally agree and I, I use crystals as well um, as part of my kinesiology practice. C- crystals are another vibrational healing medicine and tool that, um is part of kinesiology whether we muscle test which crystal that the client needs if that's what's coming up you know um where to put it whether it's to help heal or clear an a blocked chakra or a meridian whether we just place them on the body somewhere or in their hand or sometimes just the crystal cards, you know, I have a deck of crystal cards that sometimes is relevant or muscle test or a particular card comes up with the relevant meaning around that. So there's so much wealth of knowledge. We can even work with crystal essences, you know, you've heard yeah. of flower essences, but there's crystal essences and, and they're beautiful. And there's, you know, so many different crystals for so many different things, whether it's protection or healing or love um so many different things as you know and with my crystal pendulum I guess that's something that I have worked with a lot over the years um especially with children or people I can't muscle test very easily it's and I use oh, it at when home you work all the time. remotely when you work remotely with work people remotely well. with clients yeah. I will use a crystal pendulum like dousing to test up um what issues they have 
Um, you get that yes, no answer straight away because crystals, as when, when you're first working with crystals, like you said, you have to form a relationship with that crystal, that crystal pendulum. You have to talk to it, you know, you know, really connect to it and then sh get it to show you what is a yes, what is a no, does it go round and round or up and down and, um, we have a really close bond, my crystal pendulum and me. <laughs> it, knows, it knows very well. You know, if I'm testing up, you know, if my daughters are sick or someone's sick, I can test up, okay, is it a virus? Is it, you know, is it something that they ate? Um, and things like that. It's, it, they're really great crystals because they're con conductor of energy. So you do need to make sure they're cleansed as well. So how do you work with your crystals or make sure that they're, in tip-top condition or cleanse. Well, well before we start that, um, because mm -hmm. you've just been speaking about your pendulum, before, there is there are processes that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so you know, do do you want to share the process that you that you do so that uh, the reason being like you with pendulum. You go Okay. You share. All right. Okay. So with um with every with every uh, crystal that I work with, um, but let's let's start with the pendulum. So before I use the pendulum, I will not only, so I'll do my own clearing um, process to make sure that I'm in the highest vibration or I call it like the sweet state. So I take my humanness out of it and I just become very what we call Zen and I'm very relaxed and very calm. So the connection with uh, my angels and guides and, and all that is, is is the highest that it can be and most appropriate for me at that time. So then I do that. And then um, I'm holding the crystal and I'm ensuring that that crystal is also within that vibration as well. So it means that it's clear and it's clean. So it hasn't picked up energies from other things or um, things that other questions that I've asked. So it allows it then to work within the frequency of which we're working right now rather than Three weeks ago, I used it to ask about old oh, Annie Maisie, you know, and maybe that's got a bit of that vibration left on it. So I wanted, I just wanted to address that. So making sure that the that the crystal is like that, and that may also sometimes mean because I will ask. Sometimes it means like that it's on a selenite. Sometimes it means that it's full moon, um, and those and it wants to um to be um within you know the, taking advantage of that moon energy or even the new moon energy sometimes i want to go out onto the grass sometimes into the sunlight each crystal will have a different thing and generally it will be a group thing so they'll all go together because i have them in drawers right so let's make it let's make clear with that and then i'll ask for the highest guidance to flow through me and to bring forth the information that's needed for that particular uh question um, and so, and obviously show me yes and show me no, because I found that sometimes that has changed for me. So, um, but that's not for any other reason. It's just that I do like to do that. I like the process of doing that. And it helps me to also be clear about what I'm going to be working on with the crystal. So, um, and I can ask very particular things. I've seen some people use like a, for these pendulums, I've also seen they have like these, um, uh, semicircle um, diagrams and so it can have various um, you know things that a crystal might that the pendulum might go towards but that you know that's for like serious people I don't go that far <laughs> like I just don't do you well it's it's true you need to make sure when you're doing working with a crystal pendulum is that you are in you are clear you are connecting foot to your higher self and to that clear energy and that you are grounded and you're not in anybody else's energy yeah, or anyone, like, no one else is in you because yeah you could be like picking up asking but you've got your thoughts of your husband on your mind or someone else in your energy field and it could be you've got to be really clear and in your you know in your own energy so but um Yes, <laughs> it does. It does make a difference. So that's good because you know, um, for those that are listening or watching, I, I don't really talk much about how I do things with with a lot of practitioners or whatever. Only because like I guess I can get a bit confused, and suddenly I'm you know using other people's methods or something like that. And it, it I like to to do it the way that I do it. Sounds like you do the same thing. So you know, the process is to making sure that we're 
um, you know, that the person's using it is clear, is calm, is grounded, is not thinking about other things. You know, you're there in the moment and you're asking for the highest guidance to flow through you and there's a connection in with your higher self and your guides as well so as well as that's the crystal right. so that's, that's right good. because if you're not if you're in your mental state still you can be influencing the yes no like if you yeah, really you can. want the crystal to give you a certain outcome yeah. like if you really want an answer you yeah. can influ you can influence that so you've yeah. got to make sure you practice how to like be above the mental plane and just yeah allow the, for the highest good to come through <laughs> yeah that's right and and i just say to my crystals okay we're working now this is the thing like no matter which crystal it is so okay we're working now and that means okay this is what we're doing now because i do speak to them um you know so if i say like okay we're working now and then we go through we do what we need to do and then afterwards i say okay we're now resting you don't need to do anything and that's how i also close that down and let them know that that We've done what we needed to do, and so now we can complete that. And then I'll go on to ensure, you know, that they're, um, what would you say, that then all the smudging and everything else that needs to be done is completed for them. But I do let them know when we're starting to work. So say if we're with a client, and then, okay, it's time now, we're stopping. We've Aww. done what we need to do. And it's really lovely, actually. It's really yeah. lovely. Like, so, um, so I have that. And, you know... I used to get a bit concerned that people would think I was a bit strange about that, but I've <laughs> since discovered that a lot of people are like this too. It's just no one's talking about it. So, Well, the cat's out of the bag now, Mel. That's right, so. the cat's out of the bag. Okay, so, you know, um, something, so, you know, um, okay, so, you know, like how do I charge them? Well, I've got like, um, you know, the selenite that I was talking about. So I will put like images up as well afterwards. So, but this is selenite, and selenite is a beautiful crystal. And if you're watching, you can see an, a selenite tower behind me. I've got slabs of these selenite, and I'll just, I'll ask the crystals if they need it, and they'll either go on it or around it. Um, and sometimes I say, I only want a little bit, or just put me a little bit away. So I'm really clear about like giving mm. the crystals what they need because they're, they're smart, they know their stuff. Um, you know, so that is something that I love. So selenite, it's, you know, that. Um, that helps me with that. Um, I will use smudging. So sometimes I'll use Palo Santo, which is um, a, a shamanic tool from South America, um, and it's wood. And so it's a little bit like sage, but I like I prefer the smell of this Palo Santo much mm. more so. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'll use that. Um, and again, as I said, you know, about the moon. But one of the great things about crystals is that sometimes uh, people – I find, you know, can get a little bit too excited and go out and start buying them and things like that. And so I'll say to people when they come here, generally they'll leave with a crystal, <laughs> you know, whether it's a small piece of um, rose quartz or clear quartz or something that's appropriate to them that, you know, that their guides feel would benefit them. So they'll leave with that and um, and that's included. So, you know, it's, as I say, you know, there's it's strange the way that spirit works. So the, um, okay, so... Clear quartz is a great thing. Sometimes you don't need to actually go and start purchasing crystals. You just don't. You can get what you need within the session or you can go into a crystal shop and, you know, and you can um, do that. There's a, what's that place up in um, Mullumbimby Crystal Castle? You can go up there oh, as well. Yeah. But you can get what you need generally from the earth as well. So you can lay, you know, lay down on the ground. But another fantastic thing to know is this. Clear quartz uh, can be programmed to take on the properties of any other crystal. And I've done this and I do yeah. this. And, um, and so that's a great thing to know. So we can use it like that. We have different shapes. And here we have like these are for, um, so these will direct energy. Not all the time, but sometimes they will. Sometimes they can be used to send energy of the person down into the ground as well. So if I'm working with someone, we might need um, some of this energy to go down to the ground um, into Mother Earth and it changes and then it will come back up as well. So it's um, great for like the cleansing of itself. So that's the great thing that I love about clear quartz. Um, what else might I use them for? What else, Alison? Just while I'm... 
I haven't got my glasses well, on. Well, you do crystal grids too. I mean, sometimes we can, if we're trying to manifest things, we can use crystals yep. to improve the manifestation power. We can. So Alison brought that up because she's very good at remembering. So <laughs> <laughs> so with um, so with crystal grids, you can tell I get so excited about this, but with crystal grids, um, how I use them is this, because I understand that they are like um, intelligent energy beings, I will sit down and say I'm working on something like a situation or a relationship, something that I want to improve, something that I want to know more about, um, say, with, you know, within my personal and spiritual development, if I'm looking at myself and wanting to improve myself and raise my vibration and release something, say, and so... I will um, come into my room, my workroom here, and within the table itself and get quite comfortable. And again, it's a private space, so I'm not going to be interrupted. And I will sit and think for a while about what I want to do, and I'll ask crystals to work with me. And then I start bringing them out, and they always are very clear about um, who's going to come out. Then I ask them where they want to be placed. I don't grid them in a way that is... Um, or think about it from a human point of view I just say show me where you want to go and always always it ends up in a pattern and it's quite amazing and the reason that I ask them to show me where they want to go is because then that energy is unlimited it's not limited so it's not um, from a human point of view I can see when grids have been put together and maybe they're limiting does that make sense to you Alison like yeah yeah. yeah, so this way it does, that energy does exactly what it needs to do to help me with whatever I'm working on, whether it's yeah. with clients or whatever. So I use crystal gridding and I do it intuitively and that actually works extremely well, extremely well. Yeah. So, yeah. And so do you leave your um, grids out for a time being or obviously, you know, it's interesting because when you say... I'm just guided to which crystals I need and stuff like that. For for our, you know, listeners out there, that mm. um, obviously is a skill that you've developed. <laughs> and obviously, you know, for some, some people they're like, oh, my goodness, how does she do that and things like that. Um, is, there a, is there a simpler way that you can maybe like just or get everyone to start practicing? Okay. So if we think back to when we were children and we played – with our free creative mind. So we would call that like the imagination process so we could see things. And that is the easiest way to understand it. So you'd sit down and it's not a heavy process. It works very, very clearly. But if you think back to using the imagination we may have had when we were a child, when we were free flowing and creative, and naturally creative within our play, within our colouring in, within our, um, uh, um, you know, within like making up like the stories in our head and things like that about fairies in the garden and, um, you know, or, or about seeing angels or hearing, you know, beautiful songs in our, you know, maybe in our head. That would be the easiest way my guides say to understand how Melissa uses um, that and, and, and applies it to crystal gridding. In fact, she uses it to apply it into all of her work because it works much easier once we explain that to her. Because <laughs> as you know, Alison, I'm a very process-driven person. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's funny because sometimes, you know, I'll use a lot of rose quartz, which as we know is for opening like the heart or for softening and for... For it's like a gentle. It's um, rose quartz is like um generally like a soft pink. So I'm just holding that up, and yep. it, and it's it is a very very gentle and kind uh, quartz. So like it's soft. It feels soft. It feels loving and kind. And so, sometimes I won't use that for ages, and then I will use it, and it comes up quite strongly. Um, but you love rose quartz yourself, don't oh, you? Oh, I love rose quartz. I mean, I've always got my big one <laughs> right with me. <laughs> um, 
you know, it is, it's, it is so just beautiful to just bring us back to that heart center and that compassion and that love and that gentleness and things like that, which is so often, you know, needed. Um, lots of blue crystals and ones from the throat. Often I'm always drawn or the yellow, like citrine, you know, I'm a very big yellow person. Um, I never used to be, I used to hate yellow, but like now I just, I love yellows as you can, you know, and it's the solar plexus chakra and it's all around self-empowerment, self-worth, self-esteem and all those things. So the crystals that you're drawn to for different colors or just, you know, it's just amazing what, what that, why you're drawn to them for different reasons. So reading about, the different crystals and the colors and what they mean has just been so fascinating. And it is, it's very helpful when you feeling stuck in your life or you're feeling like, you know, you don't know how to get through something, something by just using drink, being drawn to a, a crystal or a color. You don't know why, but just picking it up and the energy and the frequency, you can just feel it starting to flood through your body and it, and it's just, it's just beautiful. It's just that having that energy just flood through your body just is, is nice. It's like, oh yeah, that, I feel better now. <laughs> and that's what I mean about intel, the, their intelligent energy. They know what to do. Like they, that frequency and that energy affects our, uh, affects our own and, and helps it. It knows what to do. It knows where we need unblocking. It knows where we need maybe some repair work done or to draw some attention, you know, into a particular area. And you know, you were speaking about like citrine that, um, that itself, that is for, you know, generally used on the solar plexus chakra. Um, and that, um, because it's gold or yellow. And that helps to open it up. So citrine is an opening crystal. To me, that's very open and it's very expansive. And so we might work with that. But citrine, I've used citrine on other chakras as well, not just yeah. not just the solar plexus. So it's really, yeah. it's a fantastic one. But again, I'm guided where to use it. Um, you know, on myself or on other people. Sometimes I need to be bathed in citrine, as you know. <laughs> bathed in gold. Bathed in gold, eh? <laughs> bathed in gold. So It's interesting. I've also used, when I'm doing remote sessions, um, I will, you know, I'm being guided for the energy and frequency of a, a certain crystal or a color to enter my client's body you know when you're working remotely you don't always have you don't have the person in front of you to give the crystal but just by um asking or being guided that they're needing that crystal even though you don't actually have it you can actually just imagine or call in the energy and frequency of that color to um you know flow into your energy field And that's so cool as well. You don't even have to have it, the crystal, but just call for the energy and frequency or all that it's all that it is good for you to flow into you. To flow in. That's right. Because a lot of, um, a lot of energy is also seen as color Mm. as well. So, you know, we can just imagine that coming down and just watch where it goes. What, you know, if if we're like a, a visual person or just feel where that energy goes into. But that's very good, like, to point out. So that's why I say, like, we don't we don't necessarily need to to buy crystals, but we can. But we can also ask for that essence and that energy to come into us, you know. Like even, is, um yeah, exactly. So even, you know, with your crystal, like I've got crystal cards and, yeah. you know, often I've got a card and it's like, well, I don't have this crystal. But just by placing that card on me or, yeah, just asking for the energy and frequency of whatever I've pulled today to, yeah. It's, yeah, to come up and, cool. and into that. It's very, very good. And and it um, it's I, I really loved working with the crystals. And, you know, some crystals like, okay, um, this is a big boy. He comes from um, <laughs> this. For this all one you here, who are listening on podcasts. This is, this is a, this is a big boy and he's, um, I'm holding him in the palms of my hands and he's got two, um, uh, I suppose you call them what arrow, like two, what are these called? Um, points, two big points. Yeah. So he's a great, he's a great big piece of crystal quartz. Um, he's come from, um, 
s- s- mid central New South Wales. Um, oh, actually, no, this one's come from Brazil. I've got another one who's um, you know who who's along the same lines of this, but he's a bit milky. But this one here has come from Brazil. He said, "I'm from Brazil." <laughs> okay, so um, a hot Brazilian. He's crystal. a hot Brazilian crystal. <laughs> And he does various things. Sometimes, like I don't need to know what they what they do. This is the thing. Like, I, and I trust what they do. But he um, is very grounding. This particular crystal, and he's he's just a big boy. Um, and my mother will often look into the crystals. So mum's quite fascinated. So she'll hold them up to the light or the sunlight, and she tells me that she sees faces in them. And so, you know, that's an interesting thing because I'd never ever thought about that and that they that there were what we call like um energy or beings or divas within it. But you know, but that's that's what this particular one does. And he generally actually sits, he holds my door. Um there's a door in the background here that you can see for my um workroom, my reading room, my office, and he will actually sit there at the door and he says he's like guarding and you can see like the mm. weight of him. That's what he does. He's like very grounding to this space. He's very good for this space. Sometimes he wants to be moved, but essentially, you know, he's pretty happy and he's actually telling me that he wants a salt bath this afternoon. So I haven't paid him that much attention for a while. So maybe he's like using his um, time in the spotlight to, to talk about that. But that's what I mean. Like I, like I just hear and I just feel and I sense and I know what they need. So yeah. I treat them well because I work with them, but they yeah. have done, um, you know, a lot of good for me. With regards to the grids, I'm not sure if we answered that question, but when I'm working with grids, I will ask when it's time, okay, uh, so we can finish this now, and I will just say, okay, it's time to time to finish now so everyone can stand down, <laughs> and and that's it. So with regards to grids, I'm generally – I used to leave them up for a week and that, but I found that um, – that I would have what I would need within, say, an afternoon. So maybe about three hours now. I'm, okay. I'm not, yeah, I don't leave it all that for a long, long period yeah. of time anymore. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I can I can get that. Yeah. Because yeah. I find that then it The energy has run its course and it's, like, done what it's needed yeah. to do. And it, to me it becomes a little bit like, um, I suppose, like almost like dusty or cobwebby. It's just like it's done what it needs to do. So just like that's it. Yeah, enough. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, very good. Okay. So, my guides have asked me to um to post a meditation to connect with your crystal. So, this can be any crystal that you have, and it can also be even um, you know, they're saying like it can even be diamonds and jewelry and things like that as well. So, let's not forget the importance of those pieces because you know they are also from the earth. So, gold. And um, any metal at all um, is actually from the earth and they generally amplify. So gold is a definite amplifier um, and also um, diamonds and precious stones. So if we're using them in jewellery, um, mm. I I myself prefer to, and my husband now does this as well, he's done this for a few years now, like the wedding rings, you know, we'll leave um, a little piece of selenite in where we put our jewellery at night and that will just take that energy from the previous day. Gold and diamonds and jewellery being amplifiers, if they're not cleaned, they hold that energy and it can become musty. It can become stale. Yeah. And it can be like you're in a time warp. So that's a very interesting way of putting it because, um, uh, yeah, it just like, you know, it's to do with the vows of your marriage. So yeah, these definitely. wedding rings, yeah, these wedding rings, you know, it is good to take them off. If you can't, um, if you don't have a piece of selenite, then you know what, you can actually just wash it in cold water. You can wash them in, um, you know, you can do that. You can put them in the sunlight. I would recommend making sure that they're, inside the house in a safe and secure position though <laughs> so you don't have what we call magpies or bower birds you know taking them because they're bright and shiny or children picking them up and hiding them and maybe mummy never sees her things again <laughs> <laughs> not that that's ever happened to me it's like you know <laughs> so so how do you communicate with your crystals like do you hear them Alison like what well I think the easiest way for me to explain it is um, when I learnt about psychometry and by just, 
you know, holding something in my hand and and picking up on the energy or the frequency or the messages or, you know, again, receiving that information. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's what, that was the way I guess I would explain it. Like I would, or also if I'm working on a particular issue, like I said, or with my clients, my guides will intuitively just like draw me to this crystal, this crystal, and then guide me how to put it and where to put it or how to use it. You know, with kinesiology, we learn to muscle test what the body wants, you know, whether it's a flower essence or a crystal, or if it's needing, you know, some acupressure points held and stuff. So that's how, you know, I, I learned to work with it in kinesiology, but now part of the session yes i do muscle testing and kinesiology but a lot of it i'm getting the download and the communication from your guides or from spirit that oh they all of a sudden i'm being they need one of those they need that and just get them to hold that and that'll help clear that energy so the more you just work with them the more you just work with your intuition and just allow that to flow through it's amazing what you'll start to pick up on and it just becomes easier and easier. Like I said, it's like that intuitive muscle that you just start playing with. And um, it's amazing how quickly things will open up. And do you find that, um, so before I, you know, I said that um, the way that my guides explained it was that if I was to think back about the creativity that I had as a child playing, would you say that that has, that that concept would, you know, has made it a little bit easier like yeah because it's I think free flow just getting out of my head like literally just the years and years of practicing being knowing that i don't have all the answers in my head so let's just can that now because it's I... very liberating <laughs> isn't it it's very liberating because we know okay we don't actually have to know everything <laughs> that's the thing my, my our, our conscious brain is is actually very limited. Our brain only knows what we've seen or what we've heard. And so our brain can actually be very limited when it comes to, you know, the universe and infinite possibilities. So the more I've just practiced, okay, just show me where I need to go, show me what I need to do and just allow the information to, to come through me. I will sometimes see a color or I will see a a, a color which is associated to a crystal okay so all of you know they're the kind of things working with your six senses working more with all your senses not just your mental brain but you know things that you can hear smell see feel you know the more you use those senses the more this information just comes naturally and easily it does it does do you um do you also find that um, as a practitioner working, you know, working with with people, my experience is that sometimes I'm guided to have and to hold other crystals other than what I would normally use so that I can hold the frequency required for that, particularly if I'm working with people who are, say, earth angels or star seeds. Sometimes mm -hmm. I need like that extra, even though I'm star seed, sometimes I need that extra support and frequency to keep me in a vibration during that particular session and also to support me afterwards to help me, um, you know, to ground as mm -hmm. well because I am dealing with very high frequency. So, um, yeah, so have you found, like, do you find that yeah, as well? Yeah, I've, I've definitely found that and especially – when you're seeing clients for the first time who aren't grounded themselves, they're not in their own body. They, you know, you're, you're actually got to start blending your energies together as well, because if you're coming from a, this kind of energy and frequency up higher and they're coming in with all their stuff for you to, for them to actually be able to hear what you're saying or receive the information, sometimes you do need them to you know either an essential oil or a crystal or something just to clear them a little bit and just so our energies can blend um closer to, together because there's nothing worse than trying to deliver information or do a healing or a clearing on someone who's just not in the same 
energy field as an at all you know you've got to ground them you've got to get them in the room because sometimes you know they're still off with their kids at home or with their husbands or their job or like they've got you know we've got to actually come together so yeah they look like the whirling dervish from the um obviously the old looney tunes (laughs) car uh the tasmanian devil you know it's like that it's like what what's like what and and so it's um it, it's very normal, isn't it? Like so that grounding or that being present is very very normal for people. And it, what it essentially means is that the attention is elsewhere. But you know, if we're as practitioners, you know, we've got to be in a state of calm and and a state of um, uh, being there because you know that's why they've come to us. We've got to be calm, and so we've got to be able to bring them in. To calm them so that then we can do the, that work effectively yeah you know? absolutely yeah so some of the some of the particular ones that that i use for say those ones i'm just going to pull up a couple here so i might <laughs> this is a beautiful one i can't even remember what it's called but it's like an egg and this is from this is from china it's a natural thing it looks a little bit like an easter egg it's got beautiful patterns on it um but that is this is like from this is very, very grounding and very solid. So I might use this. I might have this. I might have it under my chair or under their chair even, or it might just be on the table. And because I say to them, you're welcome to touch any crystal. Anything that you see here, you're welcome to touch. And mm. suddenly they might just pick it up and start playing with it. It's pyrite, um, like a pyrite. So it's very, very grounding and heavy. It feels heavy, but it's very beautiful. So that's like, a, you know, crystal... This one here, this is from um, this is from Switzerland, and this this has got a lot of points on it. And this is um, smoky quartz, and again, mm. that is quite grounding itself. So these are some of the types of things that we might use, but we can still just again um, call upon that color as well. So we don't actually need them here with us, you know. Um, well, that's the great thing about crystals. You know, they're just the extra support. They're supports. They, they do the work. Yeah. You know, they're doing the work. So it, it makes our job a lot easier. We don't, it's not us doing the work. We just, you know, work. Mm. The crystals can do the work. The crystals can, can remove the fear. They can, yeah. you know, remove the um, anxiety. They can raise your vibration. They're removing the blocks. They're, stabilize. They can stabilize yeah. your energy as well. And that's another important thing that they do. Um. One thing that I have realized over my time is that um, some people are using um, crystals as a way to psychically protect themselves, but they're using it in a way that it's because if they don't have it, they will mm. suffer. And so there's a there's an over-reliance on it. And that is like from a state of, you know, obviously from a state of being concerned about something, um, a state of, um, you know, being fearful. Um, but what do you have to say about like what's your thoughts on that on this on an over reliance of it? Do you have anything to say? Um, I I agree. I don't use crystals in that way. I just use them as a, a tool. Um, I haven't found that I've needed to use them as an over reliance, like with protection and stuff like that, because I I find that you know God and source energy is um the ultimate protection so it's i try highest. not to over rely yeah. on them mm. um to complement so yeah. it would to be com- more to yeah. complement a- absolutely as to yeah. keep the room you know clear and and things like that but ultimately i wouldn't over rely on them yeah they're just an just one of those extra vibrational healing tools that um i like to have around to be able yeah. to help support yeah yeah. yeah, that's and that that's like for me that's really important to bring that up and and I did want to know if you felt the same way as I do because you know, <laughs> but it, it's I have but seen each, that each to their own each that's to the their thing. own each to their own because we all will need it but I'm you know like all we'll all have things that we can do but when but what I'm speaking about here is not um an over reliance from a point of view that you know like if I don't have it if I don't have it you know this will happen to me and that's what i mean that's what i mean by over reliance rather than actually um i have everything i need and i'm i'm bringing it in and these will support me these crystals yeah. will support me they're one of the tools to support and help me 
So that's how I like to use them. Um, but yeah, so this particular meditation that um, that I'll record this afternoon um, will will follow on from this um, podcast and it will be available across all of my platforms like social media and on my website and it's included like it's made available because that's what spirit wants so the idea of it is to be able to connect with your crystals so sitting with it you know what does it have to tell you what does it want to know you know sometimes they do need a bit of extra support they they will want to be in the sun they want to be um used in a particular way or they might just need to have a little bit of a rest etc but this is also a way for people to to do this meditation and to start working with them and it opens up that creativity within the brain as well as the guides were saying about you know like about understanding how to work intuitively um, and it, it's an opportunity also for the writing and for the journaling as well and which is great because then you've got a written record of how that meditation went what information came through in that time and um because i like record keeping from that point of view because then i can look back and say i knew it i knew i was right i just had to wait <laughs> or that made no sense to me at that time but now i can see why i would have needed to carry that crystal with me over that period of time so yeah so wise wise crystals very wise crystals so we're going to finish up now but i i'm so happy to be able to you know to talk about this topic particularly with you allison and again you know like i hope that everyone gets something out of it you know yeah definitely and understanding it yeah so there you are so that's crystals that's how i use them what i do with them and allison's offered wise words too so (laughs) There we are. So anything else? Are we going to wrap up now? No, I think we've covered it all. It sounds really great. Go on, everyone, have fun and play with some crystals play and see crystals. what you can, um, how they can enhance or help you. It'd be, you know, and give us any feedback. We'd love to hear from you and um, let us know how you go. Yeah, let us know how you go. We love the crystals and, look, we love hearing from you too. So until next week. It's bye from me and bye from Alison. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Sacred Sessions. Your comments, questions, and topic suggestions are welcome. So connect with us on Facebook and Instagram and through our websites. Naturally, all links are in the show notes.